Hello, my name is Thomas Rawlings and I am the lead designer on Agatha Christie, Death on the Cards, and I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the game and how it came to be. It is a social deduction card game which is the most fun you and your friends and family can have when sat around the kitchen table that only results in a little bit of murder and skullduggery. The first thing I did is sat down and read a bunch of Agatha Christie's novels. Uh, I hadn't read them for a few years, although I enjoyed them on TV and film, so it was a real pleasure to dip back into them, in fact dive back into them because they're, they're deep and very entertaining. Uh, and I find myself thinking, oh my gosh, this is work. I am being paid to sit here and read amazing novels. Um, after reading a bunch of them and really distilling down through the way I think about things as a games designer, the core of it really was that essential idea that everybody's a bit guilty, but only somebody's guilty of murder. And I felt that that could form the central premise of the game. As in, you've got secrets, you want to hold on to those secrets. They might not be the secret that you're a murderer, but you don't want them to reveal them nonetheless. And that formed the central core of what I felt the game could be. Well, as a games designer, I think it's all very gamic anyway. The whole idea when you're reading a murder mystery novel, you as the reader are trying to figure out what's going on. Who did it? How did they do it? Why did they do it? And so that whole sense of you trying to understand it, you competing against um, the story, it, it's already a game. So for us, it was just that extra step in turning it into a social game with a group of people sat around having a lot of fun. Well, the way we did it is by getting those characters to do what they do best, which is detect. So each player has a series of secrets that they're trying to hold back. One of those secret cards reveals the murderer. The detectives, bit by bit, can figure out and reveal those secrets. So by collecting three Poirot cards, that is Poirot uncovering one of those clues, by playing those into the game, you force another player to reveal their secrets. Different combinations of clue cards have slightly different effects and powers within the game. For example, here's our Miss Marple cards, but also we have Harley Quinn, I think one of Agatha Christie's more interesting and iconic characters, uh, which is used as a wild card to complete sets. One of the bits that I've really loved in playtesting and really enjoyed is this card here, the Not So Fast You Fiend card. It's a cancel card, it allows you to cancel the actions of another player, but you can also cancel this card itself. So what you find is somebody plays a clue to reveal a secret, somebody cancels it, somebody cancels that one, somebody cancels the cancelling, somebody cancels the cancelling of the cancelling of the cancelling. Before long, it's great fun to watch everybody trying to figure out who's what, where and who. And that is where the secret of the game is, in the psychology of all the people sat around playing. It's a lot of fun.